Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to the March 2024 Hyperledger Financial Markets Mortgage Subgroup Meeting. Before we get started, I would like to express our appreciation to the Financial Markets Special Interest Group and the Hyperledger Foundation for the ongoing support in making this possible. As I said, I'm already sharing my screen. Um, if you guys can't see it or can't hear it, uh, please let me know and we will try and correct it. As always, please note that this meeting is being recorded and is under the umbrella of the Hyperledger Foundation. So we ask that everyone abide by the antitrust policy and code of conduct. The antitrust policy states that we avoid discussions of company specific pricing products and projects, we don't make negative remarks about other companies or products. And the code of conduct means that we treat each other with respect, never discriminate and communicate constructively. We fully support Hyperledger's policy of openness, equity, and inclusion. Okay, everyone is welcome in our meetings, and this is intended to be an open forum for sharing ideas and having constructive discussion. Uh, we'd like to express our appreciation to all the Hyperledger Premier members and general members, uh, some of which are, are shown on this slide. If you're new, welcome and feel free to introduce yourself in the comments. But if you're lurking, and I know I like to lurk in quite a few of these meetings, that's welcome as well. Here's our agenda for today. We've covered the introduction. Next, we'll go over some hyperledger community information. James will then give us an update on the status of blockchain in the mortgage industry. Then Kyle Lee, the CEO from NFTEE.ai, will discuss digital identity and then we'll close with any questions. But feel free to ask questions during the course of this presentation as well. We always cover this slide in, in each meeting. This is to reinforce that we're all on the same blockchain journey, but we may be at different points along that journey. Uh, this is meant to demonstrate the feasibility of blockchain technology through mortgage industry use cases. Uh, we want to define potential implementation paths for the mortgage industry and other industries as well. And what does it take for a mortgage company to implement blockchain and how difficult is it? Okay, the next several slides, I always mention for those that are new to our group and would like more information, but I will burn through them pretty quickly. Okay, this slide provides a link to different resources, the Linux Foundation, Hyperledger Foundation, the uh, wiki for our mortgage subgroup, second from the bottom. Uh, I highly encourage you to take a look at that. Uh, these are great resources for uh, people that are new to the group. They contain meeting notes and recordings for all of our previous sessions and curated articles about blockchain in the mortgage industry. And several hundred curated articles. So I, I think it's a really great resource if you want to avail yourself of that. Okay, if you want to access these resources, you will need a Linux ID or an LFID. This slide walks you through that and there's a video to help you. I also encourage you to get a Hyperledger Fabric certification. I, I think this is very worthwhile. And then lastly, the blockchain training that Hyperledger uh, offers. This is how I got more in depth into blockchain. It's free, I think very valuable. Highly encourage you to take it. And with that, I will turn it over to James Hendrick, who's going to go over the status of blockchain in the mortgage industry. James, take it away. Excellent. Thank you, Marvin. Appreciate the uh, opening today. Welcome, everybody, to the March presentation. Um, you know, today we're talking about identity theft, we're talking about deep fakes, we're talking about a lot that has to do with, you know, a user controlling their information. So as I was doing research for articles, I did find a couple articles relevant to this topic, as well as a few others that I'd like to share with you. So Marvin, let's go ahead and jump on to the next slide. So this first article coming out of Quora really starts with the advantages of blockchain in preventing identity theft. So it talks about the traditional things we always hear about, decentralized ledger, transparency and immutability. But it also talks about a couple other topics. So cryptography and security and how blockchain uses advanced cryptographic techniques to secure data. Each of the transaction details are encrypted. 
talks about self-sovereign identity, how blockchain enables the concept of self-sovereign identity, allowing individuals to have control over their digital identities. This lets them control how much information is shared and exactly with whom and can dramatically reduce identity theft. And then it also talks about the advantages of zero knowledge proofs and how it allows for verifications of transactions without revealing any underlying personal data. The second part of the article talks about the challenges and limitations. And, you know, we hear frequently about scalability, obviously regulatory and legal uh, concerns are high on the radar. But he also talks about privacy concerns. So for some people, the permanent and transparent nature of the blockchain ledger it raises concerns about data privacy and potential for misuse. The technical complexity and adoption barriers that are out there because of the complexity of blockchain technology and AI, the learning curves pose barriers to widespread adoption. And security risks, while smart, with smart contracts do have vulnerabilities. So for example, they can be exploited by hackers and the decentralized nature of blockchain can make it di difficult to rectify such issues once they occur. The second article that we've got is from NASDAQ. It's actually an article and video. It's hosted by Rob Nelson with Craig Sellers, who's the co-founder of stablecoin giant Tether. And he's also the CEO of SelfID. SelfID is focused on solutions around how identity and data are owned and shared via the blockchain. They discuss a future where individuals own and control their digital identities, focusing on how blockchain technology can assist in authenticating ID identities amid the rise of AI and deep fakes. Nelson outlines a value proposition in this field, the opportunity for individuals to possess their data, monetize it, and dictate its usage. Seller adds that he envisions a future where digital signatures validate the origin of content, thus ensuring authenticity. Ultimately, this will lead to a shift in how we perceive and manage our digital selves, offering a blueprint for a more controlled uh, digital existence. Marvin, moving on to the next slide. You know, these next two articles are touching on some other topics. So we've had a big focus on tokenization over the last year within the financial industry. That's exactly what this blockchain for real estate, it's coming article is about. It talks about project Chainlink, which is built on the Ethereum blockchain, and it places tamper-proof data onto smart contracts. Now it's working on linking real-world assets, including real estate. Ultimately, they're looking to achieve an efficient and transparent method for real estate transactions. SWIFT, which is the international banking system's antiquated transfer system, is also moving to the Chainlink network. Collaborators include Boney Mellon, Citi, and Lloyds. Chainlink uses zero-knowledge proofs to verify real property details. Smart contracts will only exclude transactions, will only execute, excuse me, transactions between verified parties. This ensures people aren't taken in by fraudsters. And it's been shown buyers are interested in an NFT market, benefiting from reduced closing times. Key title information can also be included in an NFT, and Chainlink includes self-updating features. This means an NFT will always hold valid details about the age, condition, and upgrades of a property, the rental values, the liens and other claims potentially affecting value, and the overall sales history. This allows buyers to have knowledge of the property without re relying solely on the seller disclosures. Over time, it builds the detailed story of a home's changes throughout the years. And then the last one we have, this is another one I'm kind of excited about. You know, we are an industry that is very paper heavy. Um, this next article talks about the future of notes and will blockchain rewrite the mortgage narrative. It's an article on LinkedIn from Maurice Cardwell. He discusses a future of mortgage notes written in lines of code on a blockchain. He imagines a secure digital record on the mortgage of the mortgage note, accessible to authorized parties, but tamper-proof and transparent. All transactions and updates are permanently logged, visible to all parties, and eliminate the risk of manipulation. 
He presents the traditional benefits to consider, enhanced security, transparency, streamlined processing, improved efficiency. As well, he discusses some of the hurdles, including regulatory issues, integration with existing systems, as well as user adoptions. The article concludes, although it's unclear the role blockchain will play in the mortgage note market, its ability to improve security, transparency, and efficiency is indisputable. I found this article interesting because in researching for um, articles this month, I actually found another article, very similar topic, talking about digital deeds. So I do foresee that we're going to, as we move forward over the next five, 10 years, there are numerous parties that are working on digitizing all of this paper intensive environment that we've lived in for so many decades. Um, Marvin, moving on to the next slide. Hey, James, quick question on that yes, last sir. article. Can you clarify when you talk mortgage notes, you're talking about securities, not uh, because some of the people that have processed mortgages sometimes put notes in the application and as the mortgage proceeds uh, through the, the, pro the origination process. So you are talking about securities, not notes within the application. That is absolutely correct. We're actually talking about the physical note security itself. Okay. So for those of you that don't know me, yes, I have processed one or two loans in my time. That's why I asked. <laughs> Thanks, Marvin. Um, this last side, this is actually our wiki site. Um, I believe Alma already dropped into a chat the link. So do make a, uh, you know, an effort to click on the link, make it a favorite. As Marvin talked about the LFID up in the upper right hand corner, there's information exactly on how to set that up. Um, by setting yourself up an LFID, you're actually going to get a couple of things. You're going to get notifications every time we update this. You'll get notifications whenever we add new articles and content, as well as notifications for each of the monthly meetings. On the left-hand side navigation, you'll see the links to our other pages. As I've mentioned, um, the articles that we talked about today, they're easily accessible on the right-hand side of the wiki, but also our previous articles over the last couple years, you'll find that over on one of the menu options on the left-hand side. So if you are looking for additional information, do take a look over there. We've got a hundred or more articles out there. And then beside the scene, behind the scenes, we've got a good close to 300 or so articles that we have collected over the last several years. So if you're looking for content, information, um, things to, to build your um, justifications or your case scenarios, feel free to reach out. We're happy to assist. Other than that, Marvin, I'll pass it over to you for our main presentation. Hey, uh, thank you, James. Uh, next, I would like to introduce Kyle Lee, the CEO of NFPEE.ai. Kyle has over 20 years of experience in IT, an MBA from UC Berkeley's Haas School of Business, and a BA from Mercer University. He has held senior program and product manager positions at some of Silicon Valley's top tier IT companies including Samsung, Cisco, and VMware. Kyle is also a mentor at Metagrove Ventures, where he leverages his blockchain, fintech, and cybersecurity expertise. So Kyle, take it away. It's great. Thanks, Marvin, for the introduction. I'm going to share my screen. Marvin, can you give me the permission? Yeah, you should be able to share. Okay, yeah, now I could share. Yeah. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Great. Okay. Can you expand uh, that a bit, please? It, it doesn't take the full screen. Okay. What there about you. now? Yeah. Better? Awesome. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, uh, it's my pleasure to talk today. Uh, in this presentation, I will introduce digital ID with AI and blockchain and my company's crypto wallet, which can be used as mortgage payment solution. Nifty is Silicon Valley based Web3 and blockchain technology development company founded in 2022. Okay, uh, this is our uh, agenda today. Uh, first, I wanna briefly introduce about Nifty. 
AI, team, and product, and jump into the digital ID in mortgage, the current uh, process problem, and propose solution with blockchain and AI, and introduce NF, uh, NFT's crypto wallet in detail, our competitive advantage overview and user cases, and Q&A session will follow. Please feel free to ask any question. In the meantime, uh, even during my presentation, if you have any question, please feel free to ask me and we can uh, discuss. Okay, this is my team. My name is Kyle Lee and I'm taking CEO uh, and president role in here. As Marvin introduced, I have over uh, 20 plus years experience in uh, Silicon Valley tech giant, studied from Adobe, VMware, Samsung and uh, Cisco, then I started my own business. I started my career as software engineer and changed to uh, R&D leadership team doing corporate business development, strategy development as well. Robert Urbanis is uh, my CTO and co-founder. We worked together at Adobe early 2000. Since then, we keep in touch each other and we started uh, our own startup business together. He is also uh, like head broad experience in uh, tech giant in Silicon Valley. He studied his career as Microsoft, Intel, VMware, and uh, other Adobe as well. Vladimir Asif is my director of R&D. He's one of the well-known Solana wireless hacker, and he's real expert in uh, DeFi application development and blockchain in general. Lee Gwen is my product manager. She studied uh, Stanford University Engineering, and she has a bunch of experience in product management, roadmap development, and uh, product marketing in general. And those are my advisors. Nia Bora is my chief legal advisor. We studied Berkeley MBA together. His day job is lawyer. He is working for US Congress as a contract lawyer. He is taking care of legal, HR, compliance, and regulation boards. And Jack Corb is my chief technology advisor. We met at UC Berkeley blockchain developer community. Currently he's working as associate professor at University of Minnesota Computer Science De uh, Department. He's one of the uh, most famous blockchain smart contract expert. His uh, specialty is security in uh, distributed system and blockchain uh, smart contract. Also his PhD thesis is He's proposing about next generation smart contract language, which could replace the current uh, most common smart contract language solidity. Alan Young is my chief strategy advisor. He is kind of the seasoned entrepreneur. He established about seven startups and four startups went to the IPO. He is also XY Combinator and Berkeley Skydeck advisor. This is our uh, product portfolio. We released uh, three products so far. The first product was the uh, volunteer, voluntary carbon credit e-commerce platform. We actually tokenized uh, actual voluntary carbon credit. So in our platform, the users can buy, sell, and trade voluntary carbon credit globally. The second product we released is blockchain NFT game. This is play to earn fishing game. We tokenized in-game item and we built NFT marketplace for trading among the users. And the third product is crypto wallet. Crypto wallet market is kind of saturated at this point. So our, this, uh, our kind of the competitive advantage and differentiation is voice controlled, that enhance security, UI UX improvement. Also we support buy, sell, trade of crypto and fiat crypto conversion and international money transfer as well. I wanna introduce my wallet in detail later part of this presentation. Okay. Mortgage ID verification uh, problems. I talk about current challenges in uh, mortgage ID verification. Traditional method is manual uh, document verification, verifying income statement, tax returns by human eyes. That is slow and have potential for human error. Also rely on third party services for identity verification is expensive and delays could happen. Also, uh, Fraudsters can exploit this method by using forged document or stolen identities. There is a rise of synthetic identity fraud where entirely fictitious identities are created for fraudulent purposes. Please take a look at the uh, data in here. CoreLogic estimated 0.61% of all mortgage applications, which represent 
roughly one in 164 applications contained indication of fraud. Federal Trade Commission received over 5.39 million reports in 2023, with 45% being fraud and 19% being identity theft. Current mortgage ID verification methods are littered with vulnerabilities and inefficiencies. The impact is financial losses and reputational damage. Okay, uh, transforming digital ID with AI and blockchain. Secure and efficient identity verification is crucial in mortgage industry. This presentation explores how AI and blockchain technology are revolutionizing digital ID. AI enhanced security. AI can automatically extract data like income proof and tax returns, saving time and reducing errors. AI algorithms can analyze documents for authenticity, identifying potential forgeries or manipulations. AI provides seamless identity verification. Secure facial recognition technology and visual processing can verify a customer's identity instantly. Simply scan customer's face with your video camera and compare it to customer provide government ID. Blockchain is also the secure vault. Blockchain stores data securely on a shared network, making it temper-proof. This technology significantly reduces the risk of altering identity information and keep integrity of the user data. AI empowers individuals. As James mentioned about SSI, self-sovereign identity means customers can control their own data. With SSI, customers hold their verified credentials and share them securely with institutions like bank, eliminating the need for centralized storage. In conclusion, AI and blockchain offer a powerful combination for building a secure and user-friendly digital identity ecosystem. This paves the way for a future of faster, more reliable, and trustworthy online interactions. Digital ID benefit. Digital ID powered by AI and blockchain makes a faster, more secure loan application process. Let's explore the key benefit for both institutions and borrowers. Enhanced security. AI checks document and facial recognition ensures applications are genuine, significantly reducing fraudulent activity. Blockchain technology create a secure, temper-proof record of user identity, minimizing the risk of data breaches. Streamlining process is also important in here. AI automatically document verification, free up resources, and speed up loan processing, reduce manual work dramatically. Loan origination system integrated with AI and blockchain allow a smooth and efficient application journey. Improved customer experience, AI and streamlined process lead to quicker loan decisions avoiding lengthy wait times and faster and more accurate approval is possible. Securely uh, verifying a customer identity through mobile apps or online portals eliminate the need for physical visits that are convenient for customers. Reduced cost, faster processing translate to cost savings for institutions. Implementing a secure and efficient digital ID system leads to long-term cost reduction. In conclusion, digital ID powered by AI and blockchain unlocks a future of secure, efficient, and customer-centric loan processes. This benefits both institutions and borrowers, paving the way for more streamlined financial experience. By the way, any questions so far? Okay, this is kind of the uh, quick summary. Uh, think about the, how AI and blockchain can be used for whole mortgage processing. Even James talked about the real estate tokenization, even stop there, even before starting the real uh, estate tokenization. 
a lot of like end to end uh, mortgage processing can be improved by uh, AI and blockchain. This is kind of the categorized about features, AI powered underwriting, automated document verification and personalized loan options. This is now, nowadays everyone is talking about the uh, generative AI and customizable AI. Personalized loan options is available with uh, those technology and enhanced fraud detection, improved transparency and streamlined communication. AI and blockchain can help all those areas. And the most important thing is the uh, last column challenge. User privacy protection and responsible AI algorithm is keys to be used in mortgage. There is an emerging trend to regulate AI usage. AI algorithm must be transparent, accountable, and required human oversight before deployment. Okay, this slide suggests about baby steps, how you guys can start or adopt AI and blockchain for your uh, mortgage approval. The future of mortgage approval lies in leveraging AI and blockchain technology. Let's explore a practical roadmap for successful adoption. Gradual integration is the key. Start with existing tools. Integrate pre-existing AI solutions like pre-qualification tools and chatbot to streamline initial stage. Seek expert partners. Collaborate with established AI firms for advanced data analysis and tailor AI models specifically for your lending data. The next step is strategic pilot. Focused approach is needed in here. You can begin with pilot project targeting specific area like document verification using blockchain. Also collaboration is key. Consider joint pilot project with other lenders to share cost and gain collective expertise. Building internal capacity is needed. Train your staff on the fundamental of AI and blockchain technology, knowledge is power. Hire data scientists or partner with consulting firms to develop a strategic roadmap for successful implementation. Security and compliance is always your priority. Implement robust data security protocols to safeguard sensitive user information. You should clearly communicate data privacy practice with your client and ensure compliance with all relevant regulations. Transparency is the key. I think you guys are familiar with the uh, user data protection and uh, privacy pre prevention like globally in GDPR, CCPA, and all others. That definitely apply to this area as well. So when you consider to adopt the uh, AI and blockchain technology for your uh, mortgage, please consider and uh, design comply with all those global user privacy protection. By following these steps, institutions can pave the way for secure, efficient, and future proof mortgage approval process powered by AI and blockchain. This is the last slide about the AI and blockchain for uh, user identity. And now I uh, jump to my product, Speakis. Speakis is patent protected and world first uh, voice controlled crypto wallet. And uh, our mission is to create the world first voice control wallet, prioritizing both security and user experience. Traditional crypto wallet often uh, present hurdles like complex private key and passphrase management. Remembering and safeguarding these credentials can be cumbersome and error prone. Security concerns, existing solutions might be vulnerable to breaches or unauthorized access. Our uh, voice controlled wallet offers a compelling value pro proposition. The first, enhanced security. We leverage voice biometric as a unique user ID and password adding an extra layer of protection. Effortless user experience. Control your crypto asset through simple voice command, streamlining interaction and eliminating the need to manage complex credential, AI and machine learning integration. We integrate those technology. This uh, even more boost our security and potentially personalize the user experience. Okay. 
uh, and, and then uh, a question that I, I have personally, and, and I think that this is uh, maybe too basic of a, of a question, but a, as my voice changes throughout the day, or if I'm ill, in how does your solution uh, identify that or, or make sure that that voice is still me, even though maybe I have a head cold or pulmonary issues? Uh, can you speak to that a little bit? That is same. Different machine learning algorithm is trained to uh, identify that. For example, we uh, develop our solution at the end of the uh, COVID. So we actually tested one of our engineer got COVID and we tested whether our system can understand or not. So it passed. So just think about the facial recognition and also fingerprint. Uh, when you register your fingerprint, it asks about 10 different ways like this, 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 that, that. And they train, same. Voice capture, we capture the voice and analyzing and small set. And based on that, we train. Even based on health condition or background noise, we train our system to understand whether the user is same or not. Marvin, that was a great question because I've often wondered the exact same thing. Using the exact same sample, if you're sick, you know, and you sound different, I get these really bad chest colds. You know, how does that have an impact? So thank you for asking that and Kyle answering that. You know, Kyle, I actually did have a question based on something you said on the last slide. Um, so I personally, I'm fascinated by the SSI concept and the fact that individuals can manage and control all their data. I guess the question I have is you mentioned that that uh, biometric voice data is stored on your secure AWS servers. Does a user of SpeakEase have access to that as well? For example, if I wanted to delete my SpeakEase account, can I go in and delete that voice biometric data that you're retaining on me? That's a really good question. Uh, think about the, one of the CCPA and GDPR requirements. Give 100% control to users' data. If user request, I must delete in AWS. And the reason we store uh, everything like by design. So when you design our product, there there were two options to store uh, users' voice biometric sample data. The first option we store in secure location in device, or we store in AWS. Two options available, each has pros and cons. And the reason we didn't choose using device storage is hacking case. What if someone take your device and hacking your voice biometric data and modify, then try to log in our system? That would be more problem. So that's why we took users' voice sample biometric data and encrypted and using encrypted da uh, data transport layer and we store in AWS and encrypted and also password protect protected there. In the meantime, you no longer use our service and if you wanna delete your voice biometric data, we definitely delete your data. Excellent, thank you. No problem. Okay, uh, next slide is about the this slide, yes. This explain about our uh, UI UX design principle. Our user in interface and uh, user experience design prioritize a seamless blend of voice and graphical element. Voice UI is the primary interface. Voice command take center stage, offering an intuitive and natural way to interact with the crypto wallet. Graphical UI is reliable backup a user-friendly graphical interface server as a secondary option, ensuring consistent access even in situations where voice recognition might be unavailable. This com uh, combined approach provides flexibility. Users can choose their preferred mode of inaction, voice or gra uh, graphical, based on their needs and preferences. Even if voice recognition encounter limitations, the graphical UI ensure continuous continued functionality. Intuitive transi uh, transition. The system allows for effortless switching between voice and graphical UI, promoting a smooth user experience. By incorporating both voice and graphical UI uh, element, 
we aim to increase accessibility and enhance user satisfaction. This design philosophy fosters a redundant, reliable, and intuitive user experience, empowering users to manage their crypto asset through the method that best uh, suits them. In summary, using our crypto wallet 100% functionality, either voice UI, graphical UI, or combination that's available in our uh, app. Okay, this slide is talking about uh, like the core technology underneath our uh, application. Speedy is leveraging the power of cutting edge technology to deliver a robust and user-friendly crypto management experience. AI, our system utilized natural language pro uh, processing to understand the user's intent behind their voice command. Swarm intelligence is inspired by collective intelligence in nature. Our intention recognition engine deciphers the user's underlying goal and executes the most appropriate action. We leverage the machine learning for enhanced security. We acknowledge the potential threat of unauthorized access through deep fake. To combat this, speak is integrate MIT's f -Net acoustic modeling, powerful convolutional neural network algorithm trained to identify and prevent unauthorized login attempt using deep fake technology. Web3 integration offers secure and streamlined experience. Leveraging the inherent security of blockchain, Speakeasy ensures the safe storage of users' cryptocurrency. Smart contract, automate agreement, and streamline various processes within the wallet, creating a seamless workflow. Speakeasy goes beyond a simple voice control wallet. It harnesses the power of AI, machine learning, and Web3 to deliver a secure, streamlined, and convenient platform for managing users' digital assets. Summary of the competitive advantage. We provide hands-free mobility, seamless user experience, enhanced security, and comprehensive uh, financial services. Okay, this is the actual demo. I'm gonna switch the sharing environment to uh, show you the demo with audio. Give me just a second. Welcome to Speakies. Speakies is an app that brings a new level of convenience to managing your crypto asset. Through this short video, we'll show you some features. Let's begin. Feature 1. Voice Registration Our voice authentication system leverages cutting-edge machine learning algorithms to effectively detect and prevent fraudulent voice login attempts. Feature 2. Voice Login Voice Login determines whether it's you or not based on your voice. If the app confirms that it's your voice during the login process, you will be granted access. Feature 3. Check Balance If you say, show balances, you can check your balances. Currently, our wallet supports Binance, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, and Clay. Feature 4. Send Crypto. You can send crypto by voice. I'll show you how to send 11 Clay to a user called Alex as a command. Send. Alex. Clay. 11. Review. Confirm. You can download Speakies by scanning the QR code. If you want to know more about the Speakies, please visit our website. Thank you for watching this video. about the actual demo we just screen recorded so the actually video is showing how the our product is actually working that was a, a great demo kyle can you post a link to that youtube video 
in the chat. And when we post the recording of this, we'll share it on our wiki as well. Um, sure. One of the questions that, that I have is, what I really like about your application is, if I were to use that, it, it's one more password that I don't need to remember. It, it uses my voice uh, authentication. So can you talk about, uh, has this application been integrated with any other applications or would you be able to do that? I mean, the business case or the scenario that comes to my mind immediately is, I have parents that are elderly that struggle with uh, mobile applications, uh, uh, different types of applications, and authenticating themselves. You don't know how many times my parents have called me and said, what's my password again? So how would I be able to use something like this, or would they be able to use something like this to simplify uh, authentication, N not just for crypt their crypto wallet, but uh, other uses as well? Okay, I can tell you about the, our actual experience. When we designed this uh, authentication system, there was like the uh, some kind of the argument and controversial inside of our uh, design team and uh, engineering team. So several options is available. So always like we should pick the uh, best option which fit with our situation. So first we uh, implemented this uh, voice use ID and password on, only then I, when I talk to investors and other partners, they show some concerning about some kind of some error or inaccuracy or uh, background noise when using the user ID and password. So that's why we implement implemented the traditional user ID and password as like the secondary or uh, supplemental solution as well. Then everything changes dramatically after we uh, after we integrate with the uh, third party transaction. As I told you about. Transact is strategically important partner. We do KYC, AML, and all actual uh, fiat to crypto, crypto to uh, fiat conversion is happening by crypto. Then, like, so the our workflow is, uh, Marvin, assume you are using our Spigis application, and with simple, uh, like the voice user ID password, you passed and if you do real kind of meaningful activity, buy crypto, sell crypto, send crypto, actually you connect to the uh, transact and transact is asking another layer of user ID password, their own user ID and password. You must register their system as well. So anyway, it's kind of the already multi-factor authentication, right? So that's why we don't uh, speak is user, user ID password authentication isn't or 100%. There is another system use ID password. So that's why we stop there. Just simple voice ID and password for us. And if the situation changes, if we take care of all KYC, AML, and actual transaction by ourselves, I am going to implement differently. For example, multi factor authentication that would be must happen in here. So based on situation, we could be flexible. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Um, now, I, I'd like to open it up to everyone else uh, on the call. I, I know James and I have been asking questions. Uh, if their uh, attendees have any questions uh, of Kyle or any additional comments, uh, we do still have a, a couple minutes on this call. P, please feel free. You know, while we're waiting for that, Kyle, I do have a question. So what do you foresee is your biggest challenge going forward? Is it adoption by the consumer, by companies? Is it, um, you know, the concerns of AI and what the future can hold? What do you see from your chair, Kyle? I think the uh, biggest challenge in a decentralized crypto wallet or even crypto industry in general is trust. Since so many dirty and bad things happened since 2022, FTX scandal and Terraform, like Dog One, many people kind of assumed about uh, people who is working for crypto is a lot of like the uh, liars, fake, and everyone just. So trust is the most important problem, not only crypto wallet, but also crypto industry in general. And 
big turning point actually happened this January when SEC approved about spot Bitcoin ETF. That changed the people's mindset dramatically. Oh, crypto is approved by SEC and US government, Fidelity and a lot of like the institutional fund now buy crypto and Bitcoin. That is, I think, the most important uh, turning point of the crypto kind of the industry in general. Like people start now slowly adopting and uh, trust crypto industry in general as well. In the meantime, challenge for entering uh, this or launch and uh, expand the business is like the, this is b 2 to c model. So there are like the, uh, a lot of competition is one of the issue and also still like the technical barrier is the biggest challenge like uh, crypto and blockchain itself is decentralized. So that's why back to the, our original conversation, custodial wallet, non-custodial wallet. The big benefit of non-custodial wallet is centralized exchange like FTX or Coinbase. Hold your private key and they provide user ID and password. So even if you lost your user ID and password, they can retrieve for you. That is big advantage of the centralized exchange. Decentralized exchange like us, you have your own private key. You lost it, done. All your cryptocurrency is gone. So those kind of technical gap is still kind of the big barrier while people are entering to the uh, crypto market and uh, cryptocurrency. So there are there are a lot of alternative solutions is available. For example, uh, cold wallet, hardware wallet. So you can safely store your uh, passphrase and private key to your hardware device. Then even, even if you lost your uh, private key, the private key is stored in your hardware or safe uh, cloud storage. If you have your uh, iCloud or uh, Google Workspace, there is option you can uh, save your passphrase there. That kind of so is kind of in general, Web 2 to Web 3 transition technical barrier is kind of the big challenge. That was a great question, uh, James. Uh, do we have any other questions for Kyle? I, I think this uh, speakeasy is uh, a really interesting product and I, ho hopefully uh, people out there will download the demo, take a look at it and um, Kyle, do we have your contact information? Did you want to share your email in case people want to reach out to you directly? Absolutely. So, uh, actually, uh, this isn't the last slide. So, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> the last slide has the uh, contact information in here. Uh, Kaylee at lift.ai. That is my email. So you can, uh, contact me anytime. And also, uh, I want to briefly mention about our product strategy. We have three different uh, suite of the product. The first product is end-to-end -end crypto wallet uh, solution that designed for centralized and decentralized uh, crypto service provider. And in the meantime, like mortgage industry may be interested about the voice authentication and login system only if you want to enhance the security and uh, streamline your uh, login experience. Also, if you have any idea or any question or did consulting about the adopting AI blockchain, or uh, we are very interested about the uh, real estate tokenization as well. So question, feel free to contact me. So I'm more than happy to uh, discuss and provide any uh, kind of the, uh, technical advice. Hey, okay, great, Kyle. Uh, thank you for joining us. We definitely appreciate it. And uh, thank you for sharing your contact information. Yeah, uh, I was gonna ask you to share that slide again. If anyone has any questions uh, regarding speakeasy or NFTEE, please reach out to Kyle. And, and again, thank you for joining. Um, I think this is the end of our presentation, uh, if, unless anyone else ha has any questions for Kyle, James, or myself. Kyle, thank you for coming and presenting today. It was some great information. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks everyone. We timed this pretty well. You get two minutes back to your day. Have a good day, everyone.